Your army embarks on a mission through a war-torn city. Concrete dust, rust, and blood fill the air. But as you scan the surroundings, you realize it's all fake, plaster, plastic, and paper clips. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, I got a little uh, caught up in that. That's right, we're uh, we're making rubble bases. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be making urban rubble bases. This is part one where I'll show you guys the materials you need and how to make them. We will have a part two where I'll show you guys how to paint them up like this one right here. Let's get into the materials. Okay, first up we have plaster. I use perfect cast, but I'm sure any different type of plaster will do. As with everything, we'll have a link for the items in the description. Next up, we have cheap paper plates, and I mean super cheap. So cheap that your food is in danger if you just use one of these things. My burrito! Next up, you'll need white glue. You probably still have some left over from the 8th grade. You also need super glue. I like to use the gel stuff for this. You'll also need some dirt. This is some very special dirt from my backyard, but I'm sure whatever you guys can find will do the trick. And lastly, before we get into the optional stuff, you're going to need a blunt object. A hammer will work. If you're feeling especially fit, you could use a dumbbell. And if you're in a nautical mood, you could even use a boat anchor. Whatever floats your boat. Now we'll move into the optional bits. First up, we have plastic bits. This could be pipes, little pieces of sprue, whatever bits you have left over in your bits bin, whatever adds a little bit of flair to the base. Next up, we have your everyday paper clips. Big, small, any size will probably work for this. And lastly, we have this plastic mesh, which I like to use on these bases. Up next, we're mixing the plaster. There are instructions for this on the package, but as you can see, I'm just adding enough water to it so it gets nice and runny. This allows the plaster to flow over the plate and form a flat surface. This won't affect the plaster at all. If anything, it'll just make it take a little bit longer to dry. Go ahead and make sure you mix it up really well and pour it over the plate. This does take about a day to dry, so I usually just leave it outside in the sun, um, and that usually helps it speed up the process a little bit. Now we're going to use our blunt object to break up the plaster. You can break these up into as big or little pieces as you need. This is also a great time to take out some aggression. Here are some topics in case you need some help on your journey. The Tyranids didn't get a single model in 8th edition. The Eldar are mostly resin still. The Invader ATV looks like a Mario Kart. And this is what we're left with. Now we can see the benefit of the cheap paper plates. They're uncoated, so the plaster actually sticks to them. So what we get are these cool pieces of plaster that actually cracked, but they still hold together. Because just like in real life concrete, when it cracks, it's not just a ton of pieces mosaic together. It kind of holds in place because it's, it's heavy. Next up, we're going to dry fit our materials. This kind of gives us a layout before we commit to gluing it down. It's also smart to keep in mind what model you're going to use, as their stance could kind of dictate the layout that you choose. I'm going to start by grabbing a couple pieces and just kind of seeing how they fit on the base. I usually like to grab a couple smaller pieces and use them um, underneath so it creates a little bit of a gap. Uh, this gap allows me to put things like paper clips, pipes, and kind of things coming out from underneath the concrete. Periodically, as I add things to the base, I'll make sure I constantly test fit the model. This is to make sure that it has a good looking stance whenever I put the model on it. But from here on out, it's a little bit free form. You can add whatever you want. You are designing rubble, so there's not really too much of a way you can screw this up.
Now it's time to glue stuff down. Like I said early in the video, I like to use this gel type super glue. It's a little thicker and kind of helps hold things in place while I move them around. I usually lift pieces off one by one and try to put them back in the same spot. But again, this is rubble, so if it's kind of off, it's not going to really make a big difference. Okay, onto the last step before we get to painting is adding some dirt and debris. What you're gonna wanna do is get your white glue and add a liberal amount to any parts of the base that are still showing. Don't worry about getting this on other parts of the base. It is a rubble base, so debris getting everywhere is kind of part of what we're doing. Next, I just grab a paper clip and I use this to spread the glue around to get it in the little cracks and wedges that we weren't able to reach during our first application. I then grab some of the smaller pieces of rubble from the box and I go ahead and I sprinkle those around the edge of the base. Finally, for our final step, you're going to grab that very special dirt from my backyard and you're going to sprinkle on any parts of where white glue is still remaining. This is just going to fill in any gaps that are left over. And there you guys have it. The build portion of the rubble base is complete. Everything I use in this video is linked in the description. We do have an affiliate link. So if you use that link to purchase anything, you do pay the same price, but a little bit will get kicked back to us. Next week, Garrett will be doing barbed wire. And the following week, I'll show you guys how to paint this up. Please like and subscribe if you found this video useful. And always, thank you for your time and take care.